Well, hello everyone and welcome to a new video in those PHP videos that I'm making. Um, today we're going to talk about something called managing, man, managing state information. So what does that mean? Um, as simple as it could possibly describe, it's the fact that when you visit a website, that website has multiple pages. And when you move from one page to the other, the question that we're trying to ask here and find an answer for is, what if I have variables and data in one page, and how do I move those, these information, these, these variables, from one page to the other? For example, you're buying something from Amazon, and as you can see here, when you go to Amazon website, you have to log in, and once you're logged in, uh, you can see, you can view the product. Once you select the product, it's going to take you to multiple pages. One page where you enter, you select the address, the other page where you select the payment, and all these kind of details. Now, as you can, as, as you know, when you visit multiple pages, every time you move from one page to the other, information from the previous page needs to be passed to the new page so it could be used in the calculations or in the processing the order. The question is, how do I get that done? How do I manage those variables, those this information, so when I move from one page to the other, I still can use them? Now, we do mainly have four different ways that we can uh, use. And to be honest, recently, mostly those are the two that are used a lot, the cookies and the sessions control. But again, this could be an old style using those two techniques. So mainly, again, we have four different techniques and four different ways, and we're going to show them all and how do they work with examples. So the first one is using hidden forms, and then we use query strings, and then you use cookies, and then we use sessions. Of course, any of these tools comes, we have to put under consideration the security of that method and how secure is uh, using any of these techniques. Now you hear a lot about cookies and how cookies could be related and associated with risk when it comes to web browsing. We're going to talk about that all today. So um, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to show you a page, two pages. I have two pages of examples and I'm going to show you both pages and how can I manage to send data from one page to the other as I'm clicking from one page to go to the next page you will see how I can actually pass information between those pages. So the first technique we're going to use is basically called using hidden forms. Now the idea here, and before I start jumping in the idea, let me just go and show you how does it work. Now in this, oops, let me just refresh the page. Now this is again my web browser, uh, web server, sorry. Now I'm going to change directory var www.html and now inside this HTML I created a folder called lesson 10 so let me just go ahead and change that to lesson 10 now in lesson 10 I do have two pages one of them is called page 1 and page 2 what I'm going to be doing in page 1 I'm going to create two variables I'm going to set values to those variables and then after that I am going to have a link that should take me to page 2 and in page 2 when I'm going to go to page 2 I will be able to see the values that I had in page one, viewed in page two as well. So let me just go ahead and show you both pages. So here we go, cat, let's go nano. So nano page one dot PHP. And here's the page. So you can see here at this level here at the beginning of my PHP section here, I have a first name Adam, the last name John, and then I'm showing a header, a heading H1, this is page one. And then I showed the variable first name and the variable last name, which is going to be showing me Adam and John. Now, this is the part where we use hidden forms. I just created a form. And in this form, I do have an action, which basically it's page2.php. So that's where the data is supposed to be sent to. And the method that I'm using here is post. Now, look at those two elements here that I have. I have two inputs. Now look at the input type. It's called hidden. That's very important. So hidden basically means this field you will not be able to see it. The user will not be able to see it. The most important part here you have to understand that I'm echoing those. So user basically, even though this is a type called hidden, 
It's a type, it's an input, but since it's a type hidden, you are not going to be able to see it. So what do I have in this hidden input type? I have a name called first name, and I'm passing the value to be whatever the first name here, which is Adam. Same thing I did with the second one, which is I called it last name as a name, and the attribute for the value is whatever last name was, which is John. Now this is the part where I, it's not my makes this technique not my favorite part. How do I make sure that the data is going to be passed to page two? I do have here an input called submit, and I just clicked page two. So you'll be able to see a button. Now of course you can go ahead and use some CSS with that button so it's not going to look like a button, it's going to look like a link. You've, you, Of course you can do that, but at this point here, submit, as we know, has a responsibility of sending the data, or sending those inputs to that other page, which is page two in this case. So this is my input, it's called sub, uh, type submit, and the type, uh, the value is going to be page two, so you're going to be able to see the page two uh, typed in the screen. When you click on it, it's just like you're clicking a submit. But again, as you can see here, this part is not going to be shown on the screen. Now, this will be the end of the form. Now, what I'm going to do, um, I'm just going to get out. Come on. Yes. Uh, of course, I can't save because it's not sudo. So let's just say cancel. Oh, I can't do anything here. Yes. Control X, no. Okay, now I'm out. Okay, let me clear. And let me go and show you what page two looks like. Now, page two is going to be the page that's going to receive those two items or two values. And I just received them, as you can see here, in FN and LN. And then I'm going to just show them on the screen. And then I have a link here that will just push me back to the page one. So let me go ahead and, and leave. And let me show you how do I have access to those pages. Now, this is my uh, public IP address. It's going to take me to this page. Uh, I know I have lesson 10 page. And I inside lesson page uh, lesson 10, I have a, uh, a page called uh, a PHP file called page 1. I'm going to click on it. It's going to show me this is page 1, Adam John, and this is the button called page 2. Now, when I'm going to click on it, it's taking me to page two and it's showing me Adam and John again. Now, if I go click page one, it's taking me back to uh, this page, which is page one and so on. So you can see here in this example, I was able to move between those two pages and I was able to pass values using a hidden form. So this is the first technique. Now, the second technique we're going to talk about is how do I use query strings? I'm going to Stop the recording right now, go and update the page itself, and then I'll go and explain how does it work. Okay, so using the, uh, let me just make sure that I got the name, uh, query string is much, much easier comparing to using uh, the hitting input. And here's how it works. So this is my very, very similar same page that I created in the first uh, example or using the hidden forms. Uh, the only thing that I did here is I took the form away and I replaced the whole thing with uh, a simple uh, A tag. So this is going to be a link. Now, usually with the traditional link, what do we have? We have the opening A tag and we have the closing A tag and we have a text that's clickable. And then what we have, we have an href, which basically you put the name of the page that you're trying to click on. Now, here's what you do. You write the name of the page, so it's page2.php, and you follow that with a question mark. Now, after the question mark, I stated the variables that I'm trying to pass to the second page. So it's called first name, and then first name is going to equal whatever the variable first name, which is this one with a dollar sign. So Adam is going to be assigned here, and then you follow that. If you have multiple of them, you put the and percent here, and then last name, and then dollar sign, last name. So those two, Adam and John, are going to be assigned to this first name and this last name, and they're going to be passed. When you click on it and you move to page two, they're going to be passed to page two. Now, in page two, what are you going to do? It's exactly the same as the previous page two. The only difference here is that you cannot use post anymore. It has to go with get, which, as we said, is going to be a plain text. There's no encryption here included. So all I did here, I changed instead of dollar sign underscore post, I'm doing dollar sign underscore 
get. So I am receiving the first name assigned to FN. I'm receiving the last name assigned to LN. And then after that, I'm showing the one on the screen. And then I have a link that should push me back to my original uh, page. Now, um, if I go my, to my page again, so if I refresh the page, this is page one. As you can see here, it's not button anymore. It's page two as a link. And when I click on it, it's taking me to page two. And still, I can see John and Adam printed on the screen in page two. You click on page one, you go and see Adam and John. You click on page two, you see Adam and John. Again, the whole point here, let me just go back here. I defined Adam and John here in the first page. But here, you don't see any Adam and John here. But I was able to pass Adam and John from page one to page two. And this is how we get this job done using uh, query strings. Now, the second or the third method is basically using uh, cookies. And we're going to see what are cookies and how do they work and why is it like every time you hear the word cookies, you start raising your eyebrows and thinking about, oh, somebody's trying to sneak on my information. So that would be our next topic. Okay, so now that we're done with the uh, hidden forms and the query strings, we need to understand one very, very important uh, concept using those two techniques. And that technique is every time you move from one page to the other, there is no way you can have access to the information or the variables or the values from the previous page without passing them to the other page using those two techniques that I just described in the previous two uh, parts. So the question is, what if I don't want that to happen? What if I just want to do it once and then you can have access to it everywhere in that website without the need to keep passing them between those pages? This is where cookies and sessions uh, could be used. So a cookie, basically, it's a file that's going to be a text file, actually, that's going to be generated inside your computer, not the server, your computer. And every time you click on a page that you are trying to have access to, those informations or those variables will be accessible using that file, using uh, the file that you just clicked on. So again, in one of your pages, you can create a cookie, and the cookie that you're going to create is basically values and information that's going to be stored in your computer. So the cookie is going to be part of your computer, not in the server. And then, once you define that cookie, as long as you, again, we're going to see how, how exactly it works, but as you move from one page to the other, there is no need for you to pass the information. The website will have access to those cookies and can use them if that's what's uh, required. One thing you should understand here that cookies are not safe, as I said. Cookies, since they are in your website, that basically means everybody can have access to them, especially if you don't pay attention to security. And that could lead to a lot of problems. For example, if you put your username and password for your bank account in a cookie, that's a really big, big problem, which you don't want that to happen. So um, let's go ahead and have a, have a look at and see an example of how does it work. Now, before we get to that point, you need to understand that you can create a cookie and you can uh, cancel the cookie and make it an expired. There's a limitations of how many cookies you can create. It's between 20 and 70 cookies. And uh, uh, for every single browser, you cannot pass at 300 cookies. And if you try to get them past that value, you'll probably start getting error messages. Or, oh, we cannot upload this page anymore because you passed your limits of number of cookies created. In a lot of cases, when that happens, you need to go and clean the history of the browser and clean the cookies out. The maximum size of a cookies could be four kilobytes. Again, those are just technical details. Now, whenever you create a cookie, you need to set what is the name of the variable, for example, the name of the cookie that you're trying to use, what kind of value is going to be assigned to it. You need to set the expiration date. You need to set um, where exactly you want to use that cookie. And then you can set the cookie to be used in a domain name, which we're going to talk about. And then you're going to have to decide if you're going to go secure or unsecure. And by secure and unsecure, I'm talking about, am I going to use HTTPS or HTTP only? Now, let me just jump into an example to show you um, how, does how do cookies work. This here 
Oops. Okay, I'll refresh the page later. But this is me creating a cookie for a website, for the same page one. Uh, and look the different here in this case. I started, before I get into the duck type, at the top of my page, I created a PHP section. Now, I have here four lines of cookies. The first two are just normal cookies. The other two lines, the second two lines, are what we call associated arrays uh, of cookies. Now, let's look at the first one here, which, unfortunately, I cannot highlight. You know, let me just refresh the page and, and navigate really fast. Shoot directory var www.html lesson 10 now if i go na sudo nano page one dot php and here it is so this page here one sec this page here that I'm moving, I'm not highlighting it, but I, I'm here, here it is, this is what I'm highlighting. This is me setting a cookie here. Now in this cookie that I'm setting, you can see that I do have uh, the keyword here that I'm using, which is set cookie. And then after that, to open a parentheses, and now you can see here, I do have one, two, three, four, five, six different arguments. Now the first one, I call the first name, and I'm setting Adam to be the first name. And this part here that I'm going to highlight is what we call the expiration date. Time parentheses will, 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 will tell you what is the time right now. And I'm adding to that 360, I think this is milliseconds or seconds. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it should be a second. And uh, I think this should be an hour, I believe so. Because 60 multiplied by 60, 60 seconds, uh, I think so. Yeah, this is a uh, millisecond, so this is an hour here so that basically means when you visit this page if you're going to stay in this page or this website for one hour as you navigate between the pages you'll still be able to have access to those values that you have here okay this backslash here is telling you basically you can use those cookies in into your entire folder lesson 10 that i have that i created so lesson 10 all the files inside lesson 10 i can use it here this double condition empties is if, if i have a domain name domain name basically means if you have multiple websites in different servers you can share those cookies between them in this case i don't have that so i'm just leaving it empty and i'm using zero as i'm using http not https i did the same thing here for this cookie and then i did the same thing here for this is an array of cookies so name of first name of last same time same time and everything um, inside my page here, you can see, this is page one again, um, echoing those cookies. And you can see here, you type dollar sign underscore cookie. You remember we have get and post. Before now we have cookie. So this will give me access to first name, which is going to be Adam. And this will give me access to the last name, which is going to be John. And in this way, this is a print R to print the array of names, which is happened to be a cookie in this case. And this is me having a link to page two. Now let me just go ahead and show you what page two is going to look like. And you would notice in page two, there's there's nothing. It's exactly the same page, same same code that I have from the previous page, where I where I wanted to have access to the cookies. But yet again, you see, I didn't pass anything to this page, uh, not not the query string, not the not the uh, the hidden forms or anything. Just creating the cookies in the page one. Now I can have access to them in page two. Um, one last thing I want to talk before I go and demonstrate the use of it. If you want to delete the cookie you need to create a, a page just like the one let me just go back and show you if i go to the first page if, if you come here let's say in your in your website at a certain place in your website you want to delete those cookies for example after the user log out you want to delete the cookies um all you have to do here when you set the expiration to be time plus that number if you just replace the plus with subtraction it will set the expiration date to be passed so it's just going to be deleted from your browser and that's how simple it is so let me just go and show you how this will work so i'm going to come here go to that page in this area here i'm going to go lesson10.php and here it is this is page one john adam and this is the array first is ali and last is ahmed now if i click on page two 
you can see your page two now it's showing me exactly the same too but this time it's page two not page one i click on page one and i go back here and you can see here i was able to move between those two pages and uh, basically i can have access to all these values with no problems now what do you need to understand here before i move on and talk about sessions this cookies those variables first name last name and name array this is a text file it's located in my browser in my computer and every time i click on any link related to this website that i just created that website will have access to those cookies and could be used so there's no need for me to keep sending them there and there and there and there i can just one time create the cookie and now you can have access to it and you can set again as i said the expiration date to whatever you want and you can kill it if you want as well now the biggest problem with cookies they're not safe they're not secure why they're not safe and they're not secure because someone can have access if somebody have access to your website to sorry to your computer the first thing they're going to do they're going to look at the cookies and try to see if there's any value information stored in those cookies and they may want to have to use them so this is again how cookies works now what's, what i'm going to be talking about next is sessions sessions works in a very very similar way as cookies but instead of having that file inside your browser they can have that file in the server and now we know the servers are a lot more secure than your computer system so it's a lot better to use sessions than cookies but again you have that technique it's available so let's go ahead and see how do sessions work so the last way now or the last method to save this date information of a website is using sessions sessions are very similar to cookies but they are a lot more secure as i said cookies are going to when you use cookies you're creating a text file in your computer system which uh, basically means hackers they can if they can have access to your computer system they will be able to definitely have access to your cookies now session on the other hand they are those are type of files that are going to be created and generated on the server side which is going to be a lot more secure than your computer now the way they they work it's totally different but there are certain uh, basics that you need to understand when it comes to sessions with sessions you need to decide where you're going to start the session and where you're going to end the session now with cookies we said you set the expiration date and if you want to cancel that you're just going to have to replace that plus with a minus to set that cookie to be expired so it could be deleted from your system with, with sessions now you just decide when you want to start it and when you want it to be ended so as long as you are the user is having access to the website he, they can the session could start automatically and the moment the user will log out the session will be terminated will be destroyed and that's it that's the end of it but again with cookies you may leave the website but the cookies are not expired yet so it's going to be there until it gets expired so how does session works well the idea is very simple simple what you need to do you need to come to your page now let me just show you this is my page my page number one or page one uh, dot php and all i did here if you can see here that i created this session variable dollar sign underscore session i set it the username to be ahmed cist2727 and at this point i decided that i am going to show it on the screen and then i will have a link to take me to page two now this is not the end of it uh, here at the top of your page before you get to the doc type type you need to come start the session and to do that uh, you need to type the following sentence let me just make sure that i am not uh, yep you go in this area here let's see where am i in this area so you type session underscore start parentheses and you close so this is me starting the session now what i need to do i can save it now i started the session here and here i am creating a variable for that session now let me save it and let me go to the second page and this page you can see here that i have i created this page uh, where i'm trying to have access to the same uh, session variable but again if i try to work it here it's not going to work so what i need to do i need to come here at the top of my page and just like how i did it back there so question mark php close it and then you come here and said session underscore start 
I can put some on here, and then you will see that this should work with no problems. Now you can see here that I'm trying to have access to that session that I defined in the previous page. Now let's give this a try, and then I'll come back and try to show you that things uh, could be checked. So um, let me close this page. Let me come here. I'm going to open the page again. And in this area here, I will go to Lesson PHP. And you can see here, page one, this is my username. And then if I click on page two, oh, it didn't work for some reason. Okay, let me go and check and see why that didn't work. Okay, so I just figured out what's the problem. And I really, really do love programming, but sometimes it makes me think about changing careers. Anyway, let me just show you what's the problem here. The problem is very, very simple, by the way. I'm just going to go and, and, and highlight it right away. This underscore, I forgot to put the underscore in the previous code that didn't want to work. I had it this way, which it should be with an underscore. And that's pretty much it. So let me save my work. And let me just go back to the page, refresh it. This is page one, click here. Now I'm page two, page one, page two, and page two, and so on. So this here summarize, or this basically here is the end of the lecture of today. What do you need to understand here? If I want to just summarize what we talked about in the whole video here. Number one, any website contains multiple web pages. A visitor will be clicking on these pages. So as you move from one page to the other, you might be having some variables and some information in the previous page that you need to use in the next page. So how do I keep that type of these information available for the user to be able to use them as he navigates through the page? We said there are four ways to do that. We can use hidden forms and you can use query strings. Either one of, uh, both of those methods basically means every time you move from one page to the other, you need to manually pass the data from one page to the other. And we said that's just going to be a little bit more of coding and a lot of work. So instead of that, we have two different other methods. We call using cookies and sessions. Now, cookies, all the valuables that you're going to use and information is going to be stored in a text file in your browser and your computer. Sessions are going to be same thing, but it's going to be stored inside the server. Now, sessions are going to be a lot more secure than uh, cookies. With cookies, you have to define those variables at the beginning of loading your page, and they're going to be stored in your, in your, in your browser as a text file, as I said. And every time you move from one page to the other, the next page will have access to whatever cookies you defined in the previous page. And we said with cookies, you need to define the name of the variable, the value of the variable, the expiration date, and the domain, if you have any, or the website uh, pages that you want them to have access to the cookies. And you also can have to set the security level. Do you want it to be HTTPS or HTTP? And then whenever you said you want to get rid of that cookie, you need to just set the expiration date to be actually passed by replacing the plus with the subtraction. Now with sessions, on the other hand, it's a lot easier and simpler. You're going to have to start the session. And then as you move from one page to the other, you're going to have to keep that session started. And then you define your variables in the form of dollar sign underscore session, and you give it a variable name and you give it a value. And once you're done with that part, as you move from one page to the other, as long as the session was defined as a start in each page, you'll have access to those variables. And then, for example, you have a login system. The moment you log out, you're just going to have to destroy that session. This will be the end of this uh, page, uh, sorry, this, this video. And uh, I believe starting from next week, we should be able to create a really, really good login system. And that will be... Uh, my next video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys later.